What's going on everybody, welcome back. And we're going to talk today about what pistol mounted light may be the one for you. Now, Streamlight has a brand that I have carried for at least a decade. I've always had a really good experience with them and they seem to be a really good mix of quality, durability, lumen output and price. Of course, we're going to talk about the difference between lumens and candela because those are two huge topics that people seem to kind of misunderstand or not completely understand. I'm just going to kind of give you the layman's version of it. So in today's video specifically, we're going to be talking about the TLR1HL, which is one of the ones I have the most experience with. This being the 800 lumen model, we're going to talk about the TLR7A. It's got those high switches. Love this thing for EDC. And of course, that big long one on my Kimber here, the TLR9. Now these all have a place and serve a purpose. Some of them do cross over. Before we get any further, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Hidden Hybrid Holster, bringing you that sweet handmade Amish leather to fulfill your needs from belts to holsters. Whether it's treating that 1911 right, tucking that new army hand cannon into your pants, or just a little bit of leather to go with that sweet 80s mustache, check out hiddenhybridholsters.com or at the link in the description. Well, let's go ahead and tackle lumens versus candela. They are two different things, but they kind of work in tandem and you need to know the difference between both because it's gonna help you choose what you need. Now think of the two like a spotlight and a floodlight. Lumens is the overall raw output of like the TLR1HL. 800 lumens of absolute punishing light down range. Now the candela is what is that focused tight beam pattern. That's why I say look at it like a spotlight and a floodlight. Now, when it comes to a pistol light, you need that good mix of both because you're probably going to be in a home, in a building, something like that. From my law enforcement or military guys out there dumping into rooms, you need something that's kind of like that mix of that punishing light to blind somebody, but also a good flood so you can see the corners, you can see, you can pie corners really well with it. A lot of those things come into play. Now, if you're using something for a rifle, you probably want that really high candela rating so you can just punch way out there and really identify that target with ease with those higher candela ratings. Now, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Those are just the most basic terms I can break it down to. Just remember, lumen, floodlight, high candela, spotlight. We're getting out there to see something a little further away. Let's go ahead and jump right into the specs in all three of these. We'll show them to you side by side, give you the weights, the run times, the switch options on there and show you the differences and what they're gonna look like between something like, you know, a compact here on this SIG RXP or a full size like this Gen 19 MOS. Or did I say Gen 19? Gen 5 17 MOS. Can't believe I just did that on camera. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the specs on these things. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the bell notification icons on and definitely give the video a like. Also, let me know what you are carrying and why down below for those pistol mounted lights. But we're gonna go ahead and get into the specs on these bad boys on this Gen 517 MOS right now. All right, everybody, we're gonna get into these, talk about all the specs on them, compare them side by side. First, let's take the TLR1HL. This is the one I have the most experience with. I've carried a TLR1 series light for over a decade. These skins can take a beating and keep on going. Talk about the specs. This is the 800 lumen version. I do have the 1000 lumen version. It is coming soon. 800 lumens, 15,000 candela, two CR123 batteries in here side by side. One and a half hour runtime, 245 meter total beam distance at the uh, hottest spot of that hot spot. 130-ish dollars, prices all over the place. So uh, dimensions, 1.47, 1.47 by three. 0.39 long, IPX7 water rated. Um, makes it easy because this screw, this flathead looking screw thing is actually kind of concaved in there. So you're definitely gonna work, excuse me, convex in there. You're definitely gonna wanna use a uh, you know, penny nickel, something like that. Let's talk about activation, okay? It's very natural because it lines up with where your thumb is gonna be right there. Give you guys a good look at that. All of these lights do have 10 tap. so. You have a momentary on if you just go down like that to the left side. You can either press up or press down on this one. You will have constant on. And then, like I said, you do have the 10 tap mode on here. So what I'll show you is uh, 10 on the 10th one, you're gonna hold it on the activation. You can go between strobe and regular. So I'll just show you guys right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold it on the 10th. You'll see the strobe stop, the light will turn off and now you've gone out of strobe mode. I don't use strobe mode, not really my thing. So overall, take a good look at that. 
Let's go ahead and rock right into the TLR7A and then we'll kind of show side by side the size comparison. So this is on that SIG RXP X Carry. Loving this thing. You can see how flush this is in here. A little bit of a different uh, way to put it on here. It's more of just a screw than it is kind of that uh, one you can do with your fingers on the TLR1HL. Basic specs on this boy, you do have the strobe, 500 lumens, which is a lot. It really is quite a bit inside of a room. 5,000 candela, one CR123 battery in the housing right here. And this has a one and a half hour runtime. Again, IPX7, water rated. It's gonna live underwater a lot longer than you. 140 millimeter beam distance, right around 130. Prices are still kind of all over the place right now. 1.18 inches by 1.27 inches in height and then 2.58 in length. And it comes in at 2.4 ounces. Uh, does have a lockout mode on it, which is a little bit different than the others here. So on the front, you will see right there, a little designator right there. One is an open circle and one is a filled out circle. You can rotate this cap until you feel that little notch kind of click in right there and that deactivates the light. So if you're gonna store it or you're going somewhere and you don't want that to accidentally get activated, you can turn it off. Again, 10 tap function the same as the TLR1HL. And again, very nice thumb activations, especially for compact. I find them just in the perfect spot. They are ambidextrous and I like this quite a bit better than the other TLR7 where the activation button was on the side and you had to kind of press in. Much less disruption here on this one, something like that. Now, the TLR9, <laughs> this thing, this is on a full-size Kimber tack entry too, so you can see how long this is. Uh, basically, it is a, if you look at it, it's a stretched out version of the TLR7, as you can see right there. Uh, it's nice. It's definitely got a thinner profile to it. You can see it's about the same width as a 1911 slide. It's got two CR123 batteries, but they are in line, uh, which is the same as the TLR7, but a little bit different than the TLR1, as you can see them right there. Specs on this one, we are going to have 1,000 lumen, only 10,000 candelas compared to the 15 on the TLR1. Two CR123s in line, one and a half hour runtime. 200 meter beam distance, IPX7 again. Here we are, 1.18 wide, 1.27 tall, and 3.87 long, and it's 4.26 ounces. It's a big one. Uh, I do find it very nice. Same activation buttons as that TLR7. It's good, you know, it's, it's a decent light, but I think it's kind of, it's overplayed or underplayed by one or the other here. You know, if it's your thing, it's your thing. Again, you have that deactivation right here on the end, like the TLR7 and the TLR7A. Not a bad light overall. So let's take some good looks here, kind of from the bottom, get you guys a good view. And you're really gonna be able to see kind of how these lights are gonna really just kind of compare to each other when it comes to length and all of that good stuff that you guys are looking for. So you can see, pretty much activation to activation button right there. You can see the differences in the length, in the width, and all of that good stuff. You know, the TLR7A, definitely the smallest one, and then obviously the largest one, the TLR9. Give you guys a good look side by side here at the full size bad boys. Give you a really good representation of what they are going to look like. And then of course, the TLR7 just kind of stands on its own. Well, let's take a look at some of that low light footage and talk about which one of these maybe crosses over into everything you can carry and then which one I'm choosing to go with at this point. Well, now that you guys have had a chance to see these things side by side and know what the specs are on them, let's check out some of that low light footage. So first what we're gonna do here, and I'll just roll this footage in, is we are gonna check out a pretty typical hallway. About 25 feet, there's a target on a wall in the room we'll be looking at. We'll roll in the TLR7, then the TLR1, and then the TLR9. As you can see here, the TLR7 coming up, pretty good. Works very nicely in here. You can kind of see this area in this, in the room. We'll kind of dump in there a little bit so you can see what the footage looks like in there. It's got a really good hot spot and it spills fairly well, especially in a good normal sized home. These rooms are 13 by 15, I think is the measurement on them. So you can see it works out pretty well. Now let's go ahead and roll into that TLR1HL. This thing is absolutely punishing. The hot spot on this thing, you can see it glaring back in the camera. 
You can see how it spills into the room. Absolutely awesome inside, even a larger warehouse, these things work quite well. Well, let's go ahead and go into that TLR9. Now this thing performs pretty good. It's got a thousand lumens, very good hot spot in there. You can see it glowing back off that wall on that target. Performs pretty well spillage into the room right here. And it's overall, it's good. It's just a little bit longer than the other ones. So now that we've kind of seen that in like a basic hallway, you've also seen it kind of what it looks like in a decent sized room. Let's see a really long hallway. So we're gonna roll in right now as me standing in the furthest part of my home to the furthest part of my home that I can get inside. Um, everything's darked out and what this is, it's about, I think it's 37 or 43 feet, something like that to the actual wall. Um, so we'll go ahead and roll them in in the same order, the TLR7, the TLR1, and that TLR9. So the TLR7 performs pretty well. You can see that's a pretty good distance to cover. Spills pretty good left, right. You get a good idea of what is out there. And the TLR1HL, this thing is absolutely punishing again. You can see where this light between the mix of a, you know, 800 lumens on this one and that 15,000 candela really comes into play at distance now, the clarity on that back wall. Now the TLR9, even though it's longer, it doesn't really perform a ton better than the 500 TLR7. And it's, I mean, it's better, but it's not hugely noticeable compared to that TLR1. Um, you know, it's good, it punches out there, but still when you look back at that TLR1 in your mind, remember how bright that back wall was. I really hope that that low light footage give you guys a good idea of how these are gonna perform out there. Now let's talk about situational and usage. The TLR1 is kind of Streamlight's, well, not kind of, it is. It's their premier duty light. So law enforcement, military guys, whatever, even though the military mostly carries Surefire, that's what this light is designed for, that out of the waistband, Safari Land duty holster style carry. Great spill, great hot spot, and it really punches out there even at a solid distance. Now the TLR7, this light is definitely concealed carry. I love it. Very flush on the SIG, the Glock. Pretty much any compact pistol, that standard compact slide, it's going to be very flush to the end. Great switches, it's very in line with where I'm already comfortable leaving my thumbs with that TLR1HL because I've used it for so long. If you think about where your thumb is gonna be on the side of both of these, give you a good look at them right there, you can see that it's going to be extremely natural. Now, the TLR7 will also fit in all of your Safari Land duty holsters if you already have them. So that is definitely a plus, but if you carry a compact at work, that just makes it even better because then you can take, say, this SIG 320 RXP, you take it right out and you throw it in your favorite appendix rig or other concealed carry holster, and you've still got that ultra compact light. Now the TLR9, it's a long one. For those of you 1911 fans out there or long slide fans, that is the one. Looks just like they got a TLR7 and basically stretched it out. Again, very good switches right there. As far as the performance goes, I really think the TLR1 performs far better and the TLR7 performs good enough that I don't need a huge long light like that. Now, if it's your thing, it's definitely a good light. Great runtime, good lumens, pretty decent candela. And like the TLR7, it will definitely fit in your Safari Land holsters that you currently have, as long as they're for a full size. That is not gonna work if you have a Safari Land holster for a Glock 19. I tried it just to see, it's, it's definitely not gonna work. Now I do have that 1000 lumen model coming very soon. I just, I don't have enough time on it yet. I really wanted to spend some more time with it and get some more rounds in it. I just, a couple weeks ago, got to do some really cool uh, training, low light in a darked out building, live fire. A lot of fun, got to use that light in there and I can tell you it's, everything the TLR1 HL800 is with a couple hundred extra lumens. Now, if you are looking for that all around light where you can use it at work or home and definitely for the concealed carry stuff, the TLR7 is just the way to go. I'm finding myself liking it more and more, especially since they changed the switches on it. I still love my TLR1s and I have several of them, but I find myself kind of defaulting to that TLR7, especially now that it's 500 lumens more and more. Either way, I really hope that this helped you guys out and I hope seeing the specs and that low light footage and everything gives you guys a really good idea of what you need and what may work for your needs. You guys get out there and enjoy some range time. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready and I will see you guys on the next one.